Lace is the single most timeless fabric we have. Old yet new, formal yet casual. Learn to make lace on your sewing machine and then make it work for you. We promise no matter what your lifestyle is, we will make a lace for you. Today on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible by Vogue Fabrics, Evanston, Illinois. Valdani Threads. Kai Scissors. So Steady. OC Sewing, Buena Park, Fullerton, Garden Grove, and Irvine, California. Richland Sewing Center, Dallas, Texas, and the Metroplex. Fabric Warehouse, Lakeland, Florida. Longview Sewing in Longview, Washington. Paramount Sewing in Eugene, Oregon. And Elliott Berman Textiles, New York City. Lace is one of the most beautiful features, fabrics, pieces that we can work with. I just love it. And long ago, it was made by hand, and we certainly through the years have come a long way. And I'm so excited when I get really excited, I flap my hands. I'm so excited to have Debbie here with us today. Debbie is by far a lace making expert, and she's really gonna take us through the process of creating this beautiful lace and give us so many ideas of what we can do with it. So thanks for being here. Thanks, Peggy. Um, Lace used to be mostly in wedding gowns and evening wear, and probably all of us know somebody who had some lace doilies at home. Yeah, so, but if um, you're not a doily kind of person, you can still do lace? Yeah, and, and I like to think outside the box. So we have a lot of doilies and a lot of linens that people probably have had in the past, and what I like to do is think outside the box. Okay. So when I see this, I'm maybe not gonna use this all the time in my home, I like to put it on my clothes. And so I found a way to make my garments and use my lace too. A lot of these designs you'll see, they're gonna show them in these fashions, but there's no reason you can't use it for a garment. Sure. For example, this one here, I've used in this blue as my neckline. So if you see this here, you can see that the neckline matches my pillowcase. And that's the same. It's the same thing, just different colors and, and sewn out and put in a top instead of a pillowcase. Wow. The same lace on the bottom here is also on the bottom of the, the little jacket here. So it's really- It's beautiful. Really a great idea. Now, my outer jacket, I, it was a little short jacket and I wanted to make it long and I wanted a long lace. I couldn't find a long lace, so I did something a little different with this example I have over here on the table. Okay. Um, what I did, this is the same lace, just in another color, is if you'll notice here, this oh. is one piece of lace. So you made lace rows. So I made rows of lace, okay. and I sewed them together. And so when you sewed them together, just like literally stitched them together, or some yep. secret super duper stitch? Nope, just straight just stitch. stitch. <laughs> That's pretty super duper. Yeah. And for this part I did, when you sew your, like these laces are joined, you okay. can see right here where this red line is. Wow, that's amazing. And um, so I use a different stitch for that. But when I'm just sewing these together, I wanted it to be more like a fabric. And that's so beautiful. I just made my fabric longer. Okay. Now I've also taken, again, we're going back to the doilies, and made, this was intended to be a lace doily or a lace tabletop and I made a tank top out of it. Wow, because I thought, beautiful. why can't I have fabric and why can't I do something different? Right, because we want it all, don't we? We do. <laughs> we want to put it on the counter and on our <laughs> So what I did here is I went ahead and I found my laces that fit together. I knew that I wanted it to be fabric. I found my pattern and got my fit. Got it, perfect. And once I had my pattern all fit, then I made all my lace. I made all my lace, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay all my laces out. And, and if they hang over a little bit, it's not a big deal. No. Right. We, oh. we need to, because we need to cover our whole pattern. If we don't cover our whole pattern, we're not going to have enough, right? Got it. Got it. So better so, to hang over than fall short. Yep. It won't go around. 
Nope. We've learned that. That's called circumference. <laughs> yep. And it's not going to change. <laughs> That's right. So what I did here is I just completely laid them all out. I got them all pinned on my, my uh, stabilizer here, which is a wash away, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in okay. a little bit. All right. And I put them together. Okay. So I had the whole thing figured, and I just sewed them together in a rows. Now, this is where I do use a different stitch. I will use a zigzag stitch, but we don't want it as wide as it normally comes up. Okay. So I usually use it like a two and a half or 2.5. So do you butt those up just right yeah, against each other and then just zigzag each mm -hmm. side? So you want to make it wide enough that it catches both sides as you're going. Correct. So but we don't want really it so easy. wide. Mm -hmm. And you just turn on the stabilizer to hold it together. Correct. Because otherwise they're going to shift all over. So how much way. time would you say it takes to stitch out one of these little pavies? Um, we probably in two days time got all of these stitched out. Okay, so you just and let we the were, machine go. And we were working pretty consistently at it, but in a couple of days' time, we got all those And you can do, make them any color you want. Exactly. Any color you love, any color you want. This that's, is amazing. That's just really nice. It, for example, a lot of people are liking tonal lace yes. you know, to match their outfit. And you, not like you can just go buy lace of any color to match your fabric. You're right, but you can get thread. Thread to match oh, anything. Oh, that is so smart. So Very you can make smart. anything you want to go with your item. And Lace is the easiest thing you'll ever embroider. Oh, I can't wait. Show me, show me. Because so, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> this is cool. So I made my stitch width 2.5, and I make my stitch length a little bit closer together, about a 0.9. Okay. So it's a little closer and a little wide. You don't want it too wide because it'll overshoot, and you don't want it too close because it'll be too difficult to sew. Right. Sew it all together. When I'm all done, I've filled up my whole thing. I've sewed it all down. I'm just going to cut out on my original lines, and I'm just going to cut that lace. That's a little scary sounding, right? That is. I mean, you're going to cut through the lace you just made. Going to cut through and the it's lace okay. I just made. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I would want to like cut around it and have these curved side seams, but there's yeah. no reason to do that. And you'll look here. Because you're going to serge it. That makes yeah, sense. I surged it. Yeah. And it holds together amazingly well. I think it's one of those things you need permission to cut through the embroidery <laughs> the once you've just made it. Yes. You just, you know, it's as long okay. as we know we're allowed to cut through it, we'll be fine. And it'll be fine. It'll hold up just fine. Okay. After that. I went ahead and finished my construction. And this one had a liner. Normally, the one thing we're going to do different because it's lace is we're not going to finish this piece up. Normally, we would have sewn it across the top right here, right? Oh, sure. And flipped it. But we You're can't do that. You're going to let the lace be like a border yes, across the top. Yes, we want to keep our lace a border. So okay. I just did a little rolled hem on my serger. Okay. And just sewed it up to that point and flipped it under. So you cut the liner the same size as you cut the original pattern. I did. They're one to one, no difference. No. Nope. Okay, that's perfect. And this this just went down a little bit when I when I did the rolled hand. So, that so it's the below purpose here. of the liner is just for you would need that for sure. You couldn't just you, do the lace. You could just do the lace. But it would. But the liner actually, act, I'll tell you why I use the liner. Okay. Because remember, I'm making things up when I'm going along. Okay. <laughs> That's an honest thing to say. <laughs> and I needed to finish my seam. Okay, sure. Oh, on the sides. Yes. It's okay on the top, but everything isn't finished. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. But so I it's really to cover the armhole, but it's better to do a lining than a facing. Yes. A facing would just kind of poke and yeah, be and this outdated. Is, yeah, the and lining. this, this keeps it. it hanging nice. That's pretty. So, it's very so pretty. That's what it I've looks done really with. professional done with that also. Yes. I mean, I like the look. It gets a cleaner inside. Okay. It's going to feel better on us. Sure. And so we're going to like that a little bit better. Perfect. Agree. So now that we're all excited and ready to sew, okay, I'd make some lace. I'm going to tell you the first thing you want to do is pick a design, and lace is called freestanding embroidery. Okay, the reason for that is because we're going to sew it on a stabilizer, and then we're going to wash it away. So freestanding just meaning it's completely free. It's, it's not actually on anything. No, because okay. what's going to happen is this this white stuff that's in there. Okay, it's, it's going to wash out. Away. Wow, that's so Sometimes beautiful. You can, um, so th there's lace that's, fr that's not freestanding and it's sewn on a background like this netting. Okay. And so what I do with this netting at, in this white jacket over here on the mannequin, this was sewn onto the netting and then the netting was applied to the jacket back. Okay. And so what that does is that just gives us that really pretty look. This lace, if I had washed it out, it would have fallen apart because there's not places it's not connected. That's really beautiful. So that's a really fun one. And so expensive when you get into ready to wear. Yeah. To have those laces. Yeah, and this is this costs me nothing but thread and some time wow. and some stabilizer. Wow. So that's kind of fun. That is fun. So now that we know that there's two kinds of lace, we're gonna go over to our machine. There are other kinds of machines that um, have books 
And with the books, they tell us which, um, the, which ones are the freestanding lace and which ones aren't. This machine is going to tell us on the machine. So if you touch this machine, this is called a, a, an advisor on here. It's a sewing advisor. And there's this list of um, te techniques down here, basically. Okay. And I'm going to just scroll through my techniques until I see my one that says freestanding embroidery. Which is what lace is. Which is what lace is going to be. Yeah, and we're going to touch that. And F is going to pop three little uh, menus, basically, is what they are. Okay. One is going to be freestanding thread only. Okay. One is going to be freestanding with fabric. Okay. And one is going to be freestanding with pop-up, which means it's going to have something that's going to come away from the fabric. Got it. We're going to do our freestanding thread only. Because we want to cut it away and place it, just yes. like what you did. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to, now it's come up with a little message that's telling me that the embroidery is going to calibrate, so I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to make a noise. That's scary. <laughs> is that normal? That's normal. Okay. It means it's alive. That's, it's waking up and it's ready for us to go. All right. So now what I'm doing, this menu that's just come up with all these embroidered designs, they are um, just exactly what we want. They're only freestanding, so I don't have to guess. I know. Good. And I'm just going to touch and hold on this one, and he's going to come over to the screen. And I'm going to send this away so we can see it a little better, and send this away so we can see down here. And this screen has popped up with my design. It's ready to sew. Before I sew, I just need to pick my hoop size, which is 260 by 200. It says it on the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm That peaking. makes it really easy. Oh, I see. You peaked. I peaked. Okay. And um, I've selected my hoop. So now you can see that I have a lot more space on my screen. Okay. So I could put more on there if I want. But for today, we're just going to have that one. So this is actually the size of the hoop and the size of the embroidery in perspective to, to the, the hoop. hoop size. That's nice. Yes. Okay. So you could fill it up and, and you'll know when you're full. It won't let you Perfect. put anything more than you can handle. All right. And we're going to say go because we're ready to go to embroidery. We've picked our design. Okay. And this screen's just got some basic information on it that's telling us that we want to cut our threads and what hoop we're using and what embroidery foot we're going to use. So we're going to hit continue. So this is just checking to make sure we do everything correctly. Correct. And that's oh, I like that. <laughs> it's going to tell me to put the hoop on. So we're going to put our hoop on there. And we're going to say, okay, we've done it. And after that, all we have to do is hit start. And we're going to hit start. And that's our handmade lace. That's our handmade lace. <laughs> and you know what? They say these days handmade is something you do with your hands. Exactly. We're doing it with our hands. We're pushing we're, buttons we're with our hands. <laughs> and you know, the, even the best part is we can walk away. Sure. And the machine will call us on our phone and let us know when it's done. That sounds good to me. Isn't that good? <laughs> that sounds wonderful. So Peggy, here's our, our finished embroidered design. It's really pretty. Isn't that cool? It's really pretty. Yeah. I love the variegated color. Yeah, I just isn't love that neat? it. And so with this, we've got kind of a, a more natural uh, matte finish. And there's um, other ways to, to do this too. But we're going to just set this aside and we're going to rinse it out later. So we'll just okay. put it right here. All right. And we'll get rid of our hoop. Okay. Now, the other thing that's important in our embroidery is which type of bobbin thread we're going to use. Okay. Generally, the machines have two types that, or two colors that come for them. You can use black or white. All right. And so what this, if you're using like a mid-tone embroidery? Like, okay. It's made, you'll see here, that it's made that the black is pulled mostly to the back. Oh, okay. So, so my matter. white's not really showing. Okay. Now, in truth, we should have used black here, okay. but we need to see the contrast. Otherwise, you're going to just see a bunch of black. Oh, so you purposely used a contrast just so we would see it. Yeah. That was nice of you to sew all these out in the wrong color, <laughs> just so, for us. <laughs> so, so there's that. And this tank top, nobody's ever going to see the other side, right? Right. But on my lace today, this, both sides are going to show. This is beautiful. You made this? Yes. That is just gorgeous. So what, on this one, both sides are the same thread. Oh, so that is this? Yes. So you put this thread in your bobbin. And on top. Not normally you wouldn't do that. Normally, normally you I use wouldn't. okay, but it worked okay. Oh yeah, it, it'll work perfectly. This is when your both sides are going to show. This is amazing to me that this lace is just. I mean, it's so rich looking, and it matches. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's really beautiful. So that worked out really well. So that's the two ways you're going to use your thread. You're either going to use bobbin thread or you're okay. going to use your 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 same matching thread on the top and the bottom. Perfect. Okay. Once we've picked our thread, um, or our bobbin thread, we're going to talk about threads. And there's 
basically four different types of threads you're going to use. There is a rayon thread that's very soft and very pliable, and when it rinses out, it's very soft like this is. And it has a little sheen to it, doesn't it? It all, does. Do all rayon thread have a little sheen like that? They do. Okay. Truthfully, I don't think you can tell a difference, the sheen between a poly and a rayon once it's embroidered. Okay. But the poly sometimes comes out a little stiffer. Got it. So okay. that's why I will mostly use the rayon in my embroidery. But sometimes, I'll, if the poly is the only one that matches, let's not let us hold it back, hold Got us it. back. Got we want to, we want to use what's going to work. We sure. certainly want to have the right stuff. Sure. The other option is like on this white jacket behind me here. Again, I'm going to go to this one. I used a, a 60 weight cotton thread, mm. so I don't have the sheen. And on this knit, I might not want a sheen because it gives it a more casual look. Mm -hmm. So I've used the 60 weight cotton and it's going to give us a little more matte finish. It's really beautiful. And of course, the, the, other, the last option of, is our metallic that we used here with our rayon. Okay. And I don't usually do all metallic. I'll use is it just metallic use it difficult to work with? From everything I've heard, it breaks or has issues? It or? can, but this machine that we've been using works really good. Most machines will do it. You just okay. have to be a little patient. Got it. So that's again why I only use it for The a machine bit. will send you a text if it's a broken thread. <laughs> it will. <laughs> It'll tell you. I know. <laughs> All kidding aside. So we've picked our thread. We've got that. We need our stabilizer. And I talked briefly earlier about that wash away stabilizer. We have two types. We've got this kind of plastic looking one here that um, when you use it, it it's um, a great stabilizer. It's the first stabilizer that they had. And since then, they've come up with this mesh that looks a little more like fabric. And with this fabric, it's going to wash away really well. It's almost like a woven, so it seems mm -hmm. like it might be easier to work with. I find it's a little easier to work with. Um, I like Price it better. Price-wise, is one more expensive than another? No, they're about, about the same. About the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just up to you. And if you do, if you have questions, you can always go to your local sewing store, and they'll help you figure out which sure. you need to use. Sure, sure. So there's ask always questions. that. Ask questions. Don't yes. be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions. We've um, done that. We've picked our thread. We've got our stabilizers picked out. And we've got our design ready to go. So then we're going to sew it out. And when we sew it out, we're going to be all done. And we want to trim them close. Like you can see these pieces here are pretty close. Do you want to do that? We'll do that. Okay. We're going to do that on this one. So you want to get, and the reason for trimming them that close is so that we can um, wash them out without having to be at it all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Based, like I said again, this is a starch. So, and when you use this size, I mean, I know you would use a smaller hoop. You were just yes. using that hoop to show us. Yes. But if you use a smaller hoop, is there any way to recycle the stabilizer that you don't use, or just you use that piece and that's it? Well, there. I'll tell you. There's some ladies take it and they'll keep it and they'll melt. They'll melt it in water and they'll brush it on like a t-shirt before they embroider on a t-shirt. Oh, interesting. So they'll reuse it, but in a different manner. Oh, that we is We can't recycle this because... You can't sew it together and kind of rehoop it? No. Okay, just checking. <laughs> no. Yes, that was not the right question no. to ask. But that's a funny question because, for example, when I was doing my tank top, my tank top fit on this stabilizer, right? Okay. But what if I wanted to make a longer piece? Good point. I would sew it together with water-soluble thread. And then I can have a longer piece, and then it's okay. But in the hoop, that trying to put it back together, yeah, might come apart, and it Got might it. mess up our lace, and then our lace won't connect. Got it. And we won't have lace anymore. Got it. So we're going to cut it out, trim around, and it doesn't have to be exact. You certainly don't want to cut your thread. So better to be a little further away than too and close. You're pretty close, but yeah, you're good. At, you've done this a lot, but you yeah. wouldn't have to be that close. No, no, you could see. You like, don't have to cut out the holes or the middle or anything no, else. No, no. See, like this piece here, this okay. is perfectly fine for for rinsing out okay. too. Okay. Okay. Now, of course, this is the thing I think that stumps most people is now, what do I do with it? I've got this lace on this fabric, right? And I don't quite know what I'm going to do we with it. Three fourths of the way there. <laughs> <laughs> At least I know if I got that far, I can do the rest of it. Yes. All right. Now, one of the things I might do with this is, for example, for this piece, I connected them all before I rinsed them out. Interesting. And why did you do that? Because um, it's a little easier to work with when it's in this, this together. So you actually just overlapped those pieces that were the same there mm -hmm. and just connected them right there? Is that all you did? Yep. Before you washed them out? Before I washed so them out. So the connection of the two of the fusible, or uh, not the fusible, the stabilizer, 
doesn't stop anything from rinsing out. The water penetrates. The water's going to go through it no matter what. Interesting. So yeah, what I, the reason I do that is when I cut it out and I lay it on top there. This one especially was a little difficult because it really didn't have an underlying connector. This one here has a little connector. Got it. You see that? Sure. Uh huh. So I kind of just had to guess. But the thing is, you can't tell. Oh, this is beautiful. So this is actually a collar that you did, and you just worked that. You shaped them. So by doing the advantage of each little section, you just shape them in the direction they needed to go. So you can turn any direction as you go around the back yep. neck. That is really beautiful. See like this one here, I've gathered it ever so slightly. Okay, to make to it. To make it shape. Okay, so you so, can shape it as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So I've sewn these out and we're gonna rinse our okay. first little guy out. We're just gonna do it in warm water. Now th normally when I do it, I go to the running faucet at home and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it under the water. And as soon as I put, get it in the water, It's going to start going away. It's going to be a little sticky. And the fa that's where the faucet really comes in handy. Sure. You're just going to run it for a while. It away. Yeah. And so this is mostly gone, and I'm just going to set it aside, and we're going to do one of these guys okay. so you can see it. Yeah, that white will all be gone. Yep. It's so called use your imagination because <laughs> sometimes when I look at this, I think, okay, how's this going to become that? Well, well, and it's really hard when I'm like when I'm working on that. It's stiff, and it's just stiff as a board. Yeah. But as soon as I start rinsing it out, it's going to change, change. And see now. Wow, that's amazing. See this one compared to that one, you can see through it now. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, that is so pretty. And what kind of thread was this? That was rayon. That is just really beautiful. Okay, now that it's not a doily, I would wear it. <laughs> Nothing against all you doily lovers out there. But, but that is really beautiful. Yeah, there's no reason. It's now, a time age thing. That's it all. is. Well, and here's the thing too. Like I've rinsed it out right now, and if I were to dry this and leave it sit, mm -hmm. it's going to be very stiff. Okay. So we and and my when I first did it was trial and error, and I really had a lot of problems trying to figure out what works. So there's lots of solutions out there. Everybody has their own solution. Sure. Uh, you can rinse it and put it in a warm sink and let it soak for a while, and then drain and rinse and put it in the sink and let it soak for a while. And then you're gonna lay it out on a towel to dry. But you think running water is the best just so that it doesn't sit in its own? No, I'm gonna do something entirely different. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> We're going to um, cook it. You're I'm gonna put it in my crock pot. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna have it for dinner. <laughs> no. Yeah, just make sure nobody, nobody comes in and- You're gonna put it in your crock pot. I'm gonna put it in my crock pot. The reason for that is the stabilizer emulsifies in the in the hot so I fill up the don't fill it too full because you got to have room for your for your piece I'm going to put my piece in there and I'm going to turn it to high and I'm going to let it soak wow at least in, about 20 30 minutes to an hour might be more on my tank top because I had so much because I actually sewed it on there so now I've got two layers got it it needed longer okay um, now here's an important thing when you're in that crock pot make sure that your fabric is is going to be color fast like our thread was. Sure. And make sure it's fabric that can take that kind of heat. Okay. That's really important. We don't want to, if, if so, rinse it out and then attach it. Okay. So through the beginning of this process, we need to make sure that we were okay. Yes. Because otherwise you're going to rinse it out before you, you put it on. Well, this has been just incredible. I, it just makes you want to go home and make lace. And I know you've made all this lace, so maybe you're done with making <laughs> lace, but it makes me want to go home and make lace. And I can tell you that over the years, I just, like I said, I love lace. And to see all these different uses and all these different ways to implement it into our ready-to-wear is just really exciting. We're at the end of our series here on Fit to Stitch today. And we want to remind you of the architect, the engineer, and the builder. And recognize that how that relates to sewing is the designer, the pattern maker, and the seamstress. When we say sewing, sometimes we think of all of those multifaceted abilities and we kind of clump them into one. To, to make you the best possible sewer you can be, you want to keep those areas separate. Recognize that some of these we're really, really good at and some of these we need a little practice on. But one of those areas will grab you into sewing. It will help you love sewing. Be patient with that process because you'll be really good at one of them while you learn those other aspects of sewing. We're so excited to bring you this series. We hope that you've enjoyed it as much as we have presented it. Again, I want to thank Debbie for being here. From all of us at Fit to Stitch, we want to say thank you and happy sewing.
Fit to Stitch is made possible by Vogue Fabrics, Evanston, Illinois. Valdani Threads. Kai Scissors. So Steady. OC Sewing, Buena Park, Fullerton, Garden Grove, and Irvine, California. Richland Sewing Center, Dallas, Texas, and the Metroplex. Fabric Warehouse, Lakeland, Florida. Longview Sewing in Longview, Washington. Paramount Sewing in Eugene, Oregon. and Elliott Berman Textiles, New York City. Get your 4DVD set of Fit to Stitch Series 5. Here's how.